So just some extra bits. This is this in particular is um, very useful to do to create this little text file. If you come back, say in a year's time, or want to know what version Linux from scratch you've installed, um, this is the only way you'd know by creating this file. So you can come back and do cat etc uh, lfs release, and it tells you this is version 10.0. So it's very useful to have as part of the LSB standards. There's this file here that can be created and it needs to be modified to um, add your own name to it. So we just do VI LSB release. Just insert your name there. And likewise, there's um, another one for System D, which we're obviously not using, but some graphical desktop environments use as well. So, in case you decide to go on to to Beyond Linux from scratch, it's worth doing this as well. It didn't take much extra. And again, just add in your uh, name into this bit here. So that's that. So we can look at both of those files. LS, LSB release and the OS release one. So there's a bit here about getting counted um, to, to say that you're an LFS user once you've built it successfully. And then this last bit is about installing um, extra utilities that would be useful um, to make the uh, Linux from scratch system a bit more useful um, from the outset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to um, do some things here because uh, there are some useful things to carry on. We'll do them from the true environment and um, I'll leave it for that, but for the time being, what I'm going to do is to check that we can actually boot from the system. So we log out of the true environment and we unmount all the file systems. So I'm just going to run these all in. These are all the virtual file systems. You can see it says unmounted for all of them, so that's good. Um, again, if multiple partitions uh, have been mounted, uninstall all or unmount all of them, but we've just got the LFS one. So I'm going to unmount that. It's not unmounting probably because I'm in that directory or I'm in that directory on this tab. No, not that one. Let's try this one. I'm not there either. So maybe there's something still um, mounted there. Let's do mount just to check that. Oh, of course, the boot directory is there, so I need to unmount you mount uh, LFS slash boot. Now the LFS will unmount correctly. So all I need to do is shut down because um, I'm in a graphical environment. What I'm going to do is just get rid of all these windows gracefully just so that shuts down nicely I'll shut the browser down and I'm going to do a reboot from here uh, sorry there's one more thing I've just remembered this wouldn't have worked it would have rebooted straight into this desktop uh, is that loading let's try that again right, I'll just uh, enlarge this A little bit hasty, um, just oh, should already be there actually. Uh, no, it won't be because I've unmounted it. So, mount LFS CD LFS. Um, I don't need to go into the troot really to do this, although ideally it should have been done in troot. Um, in fact, no, I don't even need to 
mount the LFS because what I need to do is on the um, boot partition so I can just go straight to the boot partition from the host and what I need to do is modify the command line um, text file and this is the file that tells um, the kernel how to load you can see it's got a load of uh, options on how to load and what we need to do is to um, alter the part UUID to the hard disk because at the moment that's pointing at the um, SD card that is plugged into the Raspberry Pi so what I'll do is DD twice to delete that paste uh, shift P twice to paste two copies of that I'm going to do insert remark that one out and then here I'm going to just whiz along to this number here delete it and I've got to find out what the part UUID is for the SD uh, the external drive is so block ID slash dev slash SDA3 is my root partition on my new LFS system and there's the part UUID that I need so that's the bit I want to copy so back to the command line over to this part UUID insert center click to paste it and you can see it's similar layout to the uh, default one for the SD card but obviously the um, code is different, the UUID is different root FS type is at uh, X4 and there's nothing else you need to change so we'll save that and that now really is the end so I'll log out of that and now I'll reboot the machine and hopefully it will boot if I've done everything right it will reboot into the LFS system now you might see the screen break up as the video mode changes but as it boots back um, it should settle down so it should be booting very soon yeah the disk light is going on so that's promising and there's the boot scripts running um, again this will settle down yep there you go so there we have a prompt RPI 400 login so if I log in with root because that's the only user that's uh, installed at the moment and the password that I set to verify that I am actually in the Linux from scratch installation I can use that uh, Linux from scratch release file and there you go there's the 10.0 and we can look at the LSB release there's that information I just created and also if we wish to the OS release file as well and if we do uname minus a it will give us details about the kernel and the system so you can see we're run. okay I've got a pointer now but uh, I have actually let's use this one so we're running a Linux system the host name is RPI 400 there's the kernel version and here important is the string that I added to the kernel and there's a date and time that the kernel was created there's the architecture and the operating system GNU Linux so that shows that that's all working